Here is a 1991 Philips model CD618 CD player. And upon first glance, this may seem like nothing special. We have a plastic faceplate, the typical dubious Philips build quality. But in reality, this is a nice CD player. And the thing that makes it so nice becomes apparent when I go to load a CD. However, the other thing that's going to become very apparent is the problem that this CD player has. You can see by this curved track, this CD player still features the very high quality Philips CDM4 mechanism. As for the problem, well, I have to say I do find it rather funny to watch this. But then again, it does greatly slow down opening the drawer, so I'd like to fix it. Here is the inside of the CD player. Yes, lots of plastic. It's a Philips. What did you expect? The problem is right down here. Now, the loading motor drives this wheel via a belt. And if I get in a bit closer, you can see the wheel has a gear attached to it right down there. And the gear is completely chewed up. Not only that, the whole entire wheel is sitting at kind of a funny angle. So this needs to be replaced. Thankfully, because the CDM4 mechanism was so popular, replacements for this wheel are readily available. Here is the one that I got. Now, you can find these replacement wheels for prices as low as 3 euro, but they are shipping from China. This one I got for 10 euro, and it shipped within Germany, so it arrived fast. And it also comes along with a replacement belt. To replace the wheel, the first thing you want to do is make sure you disconnect power. Not just for electrical safety, but also because you don't want the CD player to randomly fire laser beams into your eyes. Then we remove the three screws that hold the front cover in place. Once the three screws are out, you open the drawer and see, on my CD player, the gear is so badly damaged that I can just pull this out as I like. Now, you push this decorative piece to the side to take it off, and uh, on my CD player, this is kind of loose. You then pull the drawer out all the way, and over here, you can see the electrical power switch is all the way in the back, and that attaches to a plastic piece that uh, goes all the way to the front. Now, this has to uh, be disengaged. Let's see if I can do this with, the, with my fingers. Okay, like so. Once that is done, uh, this should be... Yeah, this is loose. And now you uh, close the drawer lift up on the faceplate and see it's it's getting caught on the power switch thing Let's see if i can uh ah there we go okay you just have to uh get that power switch to be sufficiently loose so that it'll let go you then pull up on the faceplate and that comes out of the way because the end stop for the drawer is on this faceplate. With that out of the way, we can flip up this cover, exposing the CD4 mechanism. And let's, uh, let me see. Let's see. Okay, pull out the drawer like that and then flip up. Okay, as Murphy's Law has it, it's still Okay. Ah, okay. There are some more end stops right there and right there. So you do have to uh, take the uh, cover loose. But now, 
finally the whole entire drawer just comes out like so. Now there are these pins in the side and those go into the grooves on the side of the drawer so you have to make sure when reassembling the drawer that uh, those pins go back in place. And there is the troublesome wheel fully exposed and as you can see this is a complete disaster. There is bits of broken plastic all down in the chassis so I'll have to see how I can clean that out. But to remove this I'm going to remove the belt and then conveniently this piece of plastic you can just bend that forward and that is enough to take out this wheel and god look at that there is nothing left of that let's see if i can just be lazy and vacuum out the pieces of broken plastic with that all cleaned out the next thing i can see is phillips has applied some grease so I want to clean that out. We are going to replace it. There is some right there. And there is more on the opposing side. Get that nice and clean, like so. And in comes the new wheel. And I'm just going to apply some white lithium grease to the same points where it had been applied to the original wheel. Just for good measure, I doubt this is really that badly necessary. Okay, and the replacement belt goes around the wheel. Pull it into the groove, like so. And then the whole thing can go in place. Yeah. Oh, you, you have to bend this plastic pin quite a bit. Let's see. Uh, I guess there is no way around bending it. Ah, okay. You can, uh, you can get the wheel to engage into the one hole, and then... Ah, there we go. Then you engage it with the front hole, so that way you don't have to uh, bend this piece quite as far. Now i got to try and get this belt into place because it has, uh... oh no, this, this has come off now. Okay, there we go. There is the belt. The belt goes around the motor and that should be it. With the new wheel in place, the drawer can go back in. Remember the guide pieces need to align with the groove and okay that's there we go now we gotta take this out of the way again like so put it back and we should be able to let's see yeah we we're able to fully close the drawer Reassembly is the reverse of disassembly, except it does require quite a bit of patience to get this power switch thing back into the faceplate. There are some alignment pins, so you have to be careful. With the bottom panel removed, I can open the CD drawer back up to get access from the top to hold this, give some support while I push the switch thing back in place, like so. And I guess it's a good thing to take off the bottom panel right from the start because you do get much better access to this uh, plastic power switch thing. And it's a good thing that I took off the bottom panel for a whole other reason. If we zoom in carefully, you can see the uh, three legs all along here are voltage regulators in the power supply. And you can see quite clearly that right here all the solder joints are cracked. And likewise over here 
I can see some cracked solder joints. Soldering is complete. I resoldered the mains input jack, power switch, five voltage regulators, and the output jacks. It definitely is a good idea to turn the unit upside down a couple of times, making sure not to bump the laser mechanism around too much. You do want to be careful, but I had a bunch more pieces of plastic from the broken wheel falling out. But now it is time for the moment of truth. Power has been reapplied. Turn it on. There we go. That's working again. Perfect. Here is a closer look at the CDM4 mechanism. Unlike more modern mechanisms where the laser sits on some linear tracks and is driven back and forth across the CD with gears, which usually is quite slow, in here the laser rotates like this. And right here sits an electromagnetic drive, so this gives you very, very fast access times. Now, let me get some uh, window cleaner onto this cotton swab, and we're going to very carefully clean the laser. Like so, the CD player is turned off, so that's why the laser assembly moves like this. That should be enough. Ooh, well that was worthwhile. Can you see that? Probably not. This is pretty dark now. Wow, didn't expect that. Also going to uh, clean this spindle because that looks to be quite dirty. Okay. Well, that was interesting. I put in a CD and it failed to read. So I came back with a dry Q-tip to dry off any remaining window cleaner from this lens. It's not the laser, it's just a lens that you can see. And that actually took off another bunch of dirt, which you can probably see on the Q-tip right there. But uh, this lens is now really nice and shiny, and the CD player does work again, as I shall demonstrate. There we go, finished reading the table of contents. And there it is, cleaned up and put back together. Unfortunately, the cleaning didn't go so well. The top cover has this really weird texture, and the more you clean it, the dirtier it looks. That's annoying. Anyway, last thing I'm going to do is perhaps the ultimate challenge to any CD player. I'm going to attempt to play a CDRW. I just tried playing this disc in the Onkyo CD player I have on my workbench, and it does not even try. It can't see it. Let's see if it works in this one. It does! Wow! Yep, there we go. Well, there you have it. Isn't that impressive? The Philips Model CD 618 from 1991. Thank you for watching.